welcome back to Sunday Night Spookies, the podcast dedicated to exploring the mysterious and the spooky unknown. My name is Lex. And I'm Sarah. And this is episode 10, our on-location investigation of Hotel Conyat in Lake Conyat, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Our journey to Pennsylvania was a rocky road. It was a long, long journey. We didn't leave Grand Rapids, Michigan, until... <laughs> Almost three o'clock in the afternoon because we're busy people. We just and we had to stop in. for snacks. Yeah, <laughs> we had to stop for snacks. We had errands to run. It was like a it's a six hour drive from mm-hmm. here. It's a pretty long journey, and most of it is on one road, straight. Yep. So it's just like six hours. You hop on the Ohio Turnpike and you get off the Ohio Turnpike right when you get to Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. obviously, and then the drive to. Lake Kanya mm-hmm. was interesting. The towns were very small. I don't think you can even call them towns. They're right. like villages. Well, the like a cluster of <laughs> folk. Right. Well, it was like the the Welcome to Pennsylvania sign was like randomly placed in the middle of like it wasn't a dirt road. It was just country. It wasn't yeah. a dirt road, but but it could have been. And I think we have a, we'll post the picture because we have a picture of it. We put on a story, yeah. Yeah, we'll post it as an actual picture. And once we crossed over the Pennsylvania border, I want to say it was only like thirty or forty minutes, like tops. It was yeah, it was quick to get to the lake. Yeah, it's it really is in the middle of nowhere. The population for Conyat Lake, which is the village slash town, <laughs> yeah, the group of town folk um the population is 622 (laughs) that is less that is half of my high school damn my high school graduating class was like 230 some very small town and you could definitely tell when we got got closer and yeah closer (laughs) it was and it wasn't like a quaint Historical town. We were. Th- I was expecting that That's me because too. the pictures of Hotel Kanya online are plot twist, very deceiving. Like the the town that. First of all, the hotel is like in someone's backyard. Like it's it's right on the water, which is nice. The front view of the hotel is kind of nice, but the parking lot's in the back. And the back, you turn down like this tiny side street full of houses, and then you're there. Like, yeah. the parking lot is literally in someone's backyard. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a bonfire w- behind our car, probably three feet. Like, there was a chain yeah. link fence between the car and the bonfire, but it was right there. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think the entire population of Conyat Lake must live on that road because it was, it's, all the houses are smushed together. And so... Like, I could stand between the houses and put my hands out and touch both houses. Right. And it was quite a few houses in... The pictures that you see online would suggest that... There are no houses. There's no houses. The hotel is on this, like, like rolling green. green field next to this beautiful lake. The lake is beautiful. The front of the hotel is very beautiful. The back is... Gross. It's a little bit gross. <laughs> so, we it, arrived very late. It was, like, 10, 30, 11? Probably. It, well, yeah, around was, there. Yeah. We tried to order a pizza... And some place called, like, Papa Joe's, Pizza Joe's. Something like that. They did not answer their phone. They were open until, like, 2 a.m. And it answer. said that they delivered until 2 a.m. And we, we probably called 20 times. Mm-hmm. No one answered. No one. Never. And the uh, only other place that was open had closed their kitchen at, like, five minutes before we called. Yeah. And so we drove 10 miles to the nearest Domino's <laughs> to get some pizza. Yeah, because we were starving. Because there's, there's, we and we were thinking, like, oh, it's on a lake. There's probably going to be, like, I don't know, like, the some of the lakes that I've, like, been to and, like, grew up near. There's always, like, a little. There's always a little, like, town. Mm-hmm. Or, like, at least, like, a main street, like, a main drag of, yeah. a, you know, a small town. And they had one. It was just... On the complete opposite end of the lake. So it was like, that was 10 miles away. Mm -hmm. Like, we went there for, we went to a coffee shop over there in the morning. But so we didn't even think to, like, stop and get something on the way in. Because we're like, oh, the hotel has, probably has to be near some other stuff. It's a a popular hotel. We were very wrong. And and the area around the hotel is, you, you just look like you're 
It looks like the beginning to a horror movie film. Like, Absolutely. You the drive, houses are run down. Yeah, you drive past this like old amusement park, which I think is still functioning. Maybe not if right it now. It is. It should not be. Um, so you pass an old amusement park that has like chain link fences around it. You pass a biker motel. <laughs> Basically. It's a tiny little motel and like 25 had more motorcycles which, than cars you're a biker more power to you oh that yeah that's cool however there were some big scary guys just kind of roaming around and you had facial to like, piercings it's like 25 miles an hour to get through there and they just kind of like stare at you like you're their next meal so <laughs> basically like, that's cool and we accidentally turned in t- into that the, parking, the lot. parking lot i thought it was my stupid little prius i thought all of them were just gonna come beat us up <laughs> right but it, you know we made it there we, yeah we made it there sorry if you live next to hotel kanya but it is like there's <laughs> trash in everybody's yard mm-hmm. like like the whole section is almost like a collective junkyard mm-hmm. there's drunk people driving golf carts mm-hmm. at all hours of day and night mm-hmm there's no limit. I think the the next morning, Saturday morning, we walked around the front of the hotel because we didn't see it the night before. Shout out to some dude sitting on the dock with a beer in his hand at 9 a.m. and a joint in his other hand. Mm-hmm. No shirt, no shoes, just, just chilling. En- enjoying the lake. <laughs> I was the nicest guy there. <laughs> didn't even say a word to us. Right. Great. It's fine. So... You might be wondering, given all the information that we gave you thus far, why we even chose Hotel Kanya. And there is a few reasons why. It's got some pretty cool history. And it's some it's legends. also been on the Travel Channel a few times on like paranormal shows. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty well-known place. Mm-hmm. So the hotel was first built in 1893. Some businessmen of the Exposition Park Company built the hotel. Um, and it was then known as the Exposition Hotel. The hotel did incredibly well, and the need for higher-end accommodations uh, began to rise. So in 1902, just very shortly after it was first built, construction began to rebuild the hotel, and it was reopened as Hotel Kanya, is when they changed the name. There's only one wing of the hotel that's still original to the 1902 renovation, and I think that's the wing that we stayed in. Mm Mm-hmm. Had to been. <laughs> it was old. Originally, the hotel only was able to hold 150 guests. Rooms were only a dollar per day, and meals were only 35 cents a meal. That's crazy. It, it was not like when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's insane. So the hotel did fairly well for a very long time, but in April of 1943, the hotel was struck by lightning. And quick side note, Something I've learned about Pennsylvania, this place gets struck by lightning a lot. Yep. <laughs> like, if you listen to um, our previous episode, episode eight, where we talk about the other two locations we were supposed to mm-hmm. investigate in Pennsylvania, Dead Man's Hollow, um, it, that got struck by lightning. And we actually saw charred trees from lightning. Like, that was like a thing. I don't know why Pennsylvania is the target for lightning. It's very hilly. Maybe it's just because it's close to the sky. Closer to God. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Um, so ho- the hotel was struck by lightning and that resulted in a huge fire that destroyed more than half of the roof. And since this happened during World War II, they, the hotel management was unable to obtain the needed permits to redo specifically just the roof. So they had to let that part sit. And it was just kind of sat there, ruined until... World War II kind of died down and they were able to get permits to just rebuild that whole section. So most of the hotel was rebuilt in 1943. That was the last it was updated. It hasn't been updated since. And boy, can you tell. (laughs) (laughs) Not that it like part of the hotel is really pretty. And then part of the hotel is like, am I going to die here? Today, Hotel Kanya is the only one operational on the lake out of over a dozen that were there originally. And so now you may be wondering, that doesn't answer my question. Why, why is it haunted? Like, why is Travel Channel gone there? Well, there's three main legends that I think most people that know of Hotel Kanye know of. And I have the first one, and then you have the other two. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, during the fire of 1943, and that was, like, documented. I have, like, actual documentation of the fire and them needing to rebuild it and whatnot. There was supposed to be a bride that was getting married at the hotel on April 29th when the fire struck. And she, <laughs> funnily enough, died on the third floor. In room 321, which, unbeknownst to us, when we we got room 321, Mm -hmm. and we 
we, that wasn't the room we were trying to book. We were trying to book 320 because we saw a video of a guy that had visited Hotel Kanye and got a lot of paranormal activity. And we ended up getting 321. And then I did the research for this episode and it was like, fate has like, come through. Holy crap. How did we get so lucky? Right, right. But she was trying to find her husband, or not her soon-to-be husband. She's trying to find her soon-to-be husband who got out safely, unscathed, and she ended up dying in the fire. Not in the room, but on the third floor. But that was the room that she was staying in. The next story is that of a little boy who died tragically while trying to ride his tricycle down the stairs. (laughs) Um, Every time we talk about this story, I'm just like, that boy needed some logic in his life. (laughs) Just, this is a bad idea. Does it say how old he was? No. Old enough to ride a tricycle. So but old enough to have logic enough not well, to ride them down the stairs. Hopefully. But I mean, like a tricycle, you're probably... It's got more wheels than a bike, Four. Right? Four younger, probably. Yeah, probably. That's all I really have for that one. We don't know his name. We don't know what year that was. But apparently, he died riding his tricycle down the stairs. Another one is that there is supposedly an angry butcher in the basement kitchen. And he's there because he stabbed someone else to death down there. And so he just kind of is like hanging out, being angry. So Hotel Kanya is supposed to be super haunted. People claim to see Elizabeth, the woman who was killed in the fire, in the hallway on the third floor, still in her wedding gown, sobbing. And they say that there's a phantom scent of jasmine that follows her around. And the room that she was in, in room 321 slash 323. Those are the rooms that it's all one room. Yeah, it's two doors. It used to, I think it used to be one room and they knocked out the wall between them. Yeah. Because there's two bathrooms. Like we had two bathrooms in our room. Right. That room supposedly is a spot where orbs are seen. You can hear whispered conversation, messed up linens, water that runs for no reason, and windows that open by themselves. Elizabeth doesn't just stick to the third floor. People say that she's been seen all over the hotel and in the amusement park. Not really sure why she would be there. That's like two miles down the road. Right. People claim to have heard the conversations between Elizabeth and her soon-to-be husband. Oh, also they found each other in death. The quick whispers all around the hotel. The hotel restaurant is called Elizabeth's Dining Room and Spirit Lounge. I her- did see that. I did see the spirit lounge. Mm-hmm. And her ghost book is prominent in the hotel lobby, but I don't remember seeing a ghost book. No, there was a bookshelf. But yeah. with the amount of drunk people that hung around the lobby, we didn't hang out in the lobby very much. No. That's one thing that like was really disappointing was just the sheer volume of plastered middle-aged people. <laughs> but really? <laughs> At all hours of the night. Mm-hmm. Now that we have given you the rundown of the history and the legends of Hotel Kanya, we're just going to break down the whole trip for you, kind of step by step. We got there late, we checked in, went upstairs, quickly unpacked, ordered some food. Had to go get the food. Had to go get the food. We set up the connect Yep. when we left. And we wanted it to run the whole time that we were gone. To see if we would get anything. We didn't get anything Mm -mm. on the Kinect. And we we got, well, because you guys have like a motion detection security camera Mm -hmm. that you use in your apartment. And you brought that along. Yep. And it needs Wi-Fi to hook up. It's like Wi-Fi and it connects to your phone or whatever. I don't have one, but probably should. And there's no Wi-Fi there. It doesn't reach the third floor. So we had to go on like... A very intense hunt for a Wi-Fi booster. Which didn't work. It did not work. By the second night, the Wi-Fi kicked on. And I don't know if this we called and complained about it multiple times. <laughs> right. But by by the end of the second day, like for our second night there, we were able to get a strong enough signal to run your camera for the night. Yep. And so we had that going. We had the connect going. Mm-hmm. The first night we had the connect going all night. And yep. And... We didn't get anything on the connect the entire night. Mm-mm. Uh, the second day was when we did like our legitimate investigation, investigation rundown thing. We used the spirit box, the necrophonic app, we our EMF detector, the flashlight, the connect. Yep, and the security camera. Mm-hmm. We stayed pretty much on the third floor because that's where most of the between the third floor and the basement, mm-hmm. and so we stayed. 
exclusively on the third floor the whole time. Mm-hmm. We had a really nice guy that worked there offer to take us into the basement to do an investigation. And <laughs> we very kindly declined because... He mentioned, like, his manager had to leave first. Yeah. And we didn't want to get in trouble. We didn't want him to get in trouble. And I don't want to go to the basements of weird hotels with strangers. No offense to him. He was a really nice guy. He was very nice. Just, we don't want to get a trespassing charge. We don't want him to get <laughs> yeah. fired. It was really nice. And I wish that I was the kind of person that didn't like to follow rules. Yeah. Because I'd be down for it in that sense but i I think i'm not into it the overall vibe of the hotel just threw me off because normally i'd be like okay let's go for like 10 minutes but just the weird uh patrons that were there the and the hotel was old Mm -hmm. like like we were expecting it to be in a historical hotel i thought it would be old and upkept instead of just old it's just old it just old like our carpet was very much green and fluffy, mm-hmm. but not kept up. The bathroom fixtures were, like, half broken. There was no hot water the second day and night. Uh, you stepped on, like, thumbtacks. There were thumbtacks, like, randomly placed throughout the entire room. And I stepped on three of them while we were there. Mm-hmm. Not hard enough to, like, go into my foot, but hard enough for it to hurt. Yeah. And I didn't complain about that because... I just, honestly, I don't have the energy to at this point. Yeah, and any, anytime <laughs> we try to call the front desk or something, like the Wi-Fi not working or not being hot water, we never got an answer. But if we would walk down there, there was somebody sitting right next to the phone. Yep. I'm going on this tangent because, like, the whole experience of the hotel led me to believe, like, or led me to not be prompted to go into the basement. Yeah. Just the general unsafe. There were some unsafe vibes happening mm-hmm. throughout the whole For sure. The whole place. So we sat down, we did an entire investigation with all of our equipment, and we really got absolutely nothing. Just <laughs> just nothing. That's probably why we sound so... We're a little bit bitter. Yeah. I mean, like this, I'm sitting here thinking, like, man, we sound really disappointed. We are. We're very disappointed in it, because it's such, it has such a following and a, and a huge, reputation this huge reputation for being haunted travel channel's been there when we checked in the lady was like you missed it travel channel was here two days ago and they the lady at the front desk bless her heart but she was like travel channel was here on wednesday and we got there on friday and she was like yeah they riled up some some demon that lives here and they blew out the windows and from the outside in the back it looked like some of the windows were blown out but in daylight any. it was just weird lace curtains that were like that just looked like there was plastic over the windows where they would be broken. Yeah, it it's I, I don't. It was a very disappointing time. I wish that we had something something <laughs> to share. I there was nothing on the connect. No, then nothing. We had like there was one we had point two figures show up at one point, but it was like the fold of the comforter. And once we moved the comforter, it was gone. Mm -hmm. Or I sat down too quickly and my skeleton, like, was, like, stuck on screen. So, like, we didn't get anything to connect. The motion detector camera never went off. And it it works because you've caught orbs in your apartment before. We've posted it on Facebook, I think. Yeah, on Instagram, I think, and Facebook. The motion detector on the camera picks up, like, large dust particles even sometimes. Yeah. And light refractions and And it didn't go off. Once, not a single event was recorded Nothing. on the security camera. And the spear box was the quietest I've ever heard it in any investigation we've ever done. There was no radio interference. There was not. There was not a single peep. No, and you even had for a while you had headphones in, mm-hmm. and you were listening to it through headphones while I asked questions. Nothing. Not. Not a single thing. The one thing that did do something... Well, two things. Two things had a reaction. Mm -hmm. One, the EMF detector went off a lot. It went off constantly. And I'm, like, under the impression if you live... Because, backtrack, we think the employees live there. Or somebody's living on the first floor. Because there was, like, pets and dogs and people... Like, it just looked like people, like, were living in it. Feel bad for them because there was stupid high emf readings on the emf detector all over the place i mean at like towards the ceiling towards the floor the middle of the room read at like a 0.20 which isn't really high but but it really should be a zero yeah your baseline in your house should be a zero unless you put the thing up to your fridge right or something 
like highly electrical. Mm-hmm. But our entire room it got up to had like, a field. So there's four numbers on the EMF, and it's zero zero point zero zero. And at one point, it got up to. 20 point something. Mm-hmm. Or on the floor, when I put it on the floor, I think it was like 50. So the EMF detects electromagnetic waves. Like if and if something's radiating electromagnetic waves, it's going to pick up on that. Exposure to high amounts of EMF for a long time is known to cause damage. <laughs> That's why electricians use them. <laughs> and like people use these detectors to make sure that there's not high amounts of EMF just in the air. Right. And... EMF exposure, well, high EMF exposure. Over long periods of time. Can cause sleep disturbances like insomnia, headaches, depression or depressive episodes, tiredness, fatigue, lack of concentration, changes in memory, dizziness, paranoia, irritability, loss of appetite, restlessness, anxiety, nausea, skin burning and tingling. So if you were to spend any length of time in this place... You're going to feel something. Might be a general unwell feeling, but mm-hmm. you could also be paranoid or You could also feel like someone's watching you. Right, which I felt the first night. I mm-hmm. was just laying there in the dark. And of course, you feel like the general paranoia of staying in a haunted hotel. But I just, I had this like overwhelming feeling that somebody was standing by the window staring at me. Mm-hmm. And it, it was stopping me from sleeping. But what's by the window is a janky... Air conditioner. Air conditioner. That thing was falling apart. And, it, and you said by the window. That mm-hmm. makes me feel like, oh, that must have been radiating something. Right. Well, when we put the EMF detector up to the air conditioner, it like spiked. Like it started beeping and everything. And so I don't know how the EMF thing works. Like that's where the EMF is coming from. And that's why I felt like something was over mm-hmm. there. Or I mean, who knows? It now, also could have just been that there was high EMFs everywhere. And we didn't... It wasn't, like, confined to our room. We walked around with it. And, it, look, we did our investigation not super late at night. But it was, like... It was, it was 11, 10 or 11. Yeah, 10 or 11. So, I'm thinking, like, people might be sleeping in this hotel. And we took the EMF in the hallway, walking around while we were doing our investigation. And it was constantly going off i had to turn it off and put it back in the room because like we couldn't use it Mm -hmm. it was constantly going off like there wasn't a time that it read something below the alarm amount it was always alarming and so i just turned it off because it was loud and it was like there's no point this whole place is like and there's no way to like accurately determine whether or not something is paranormal when it's always going off right like and there's no, no way that you were just constantly walking through ghosts mm-hmm. like it's just <laughs> there's just no there's way. Not a wall of ghosts banded together to stop us from moving through or forward right we also had our flashlight which in the past has worked if you've seen slash listen to all of our like media about sarah's house investigation it worked for us there mm-hmm. and it, like it didn't work to the point where it was going off constantly, but it went we off had once. one response. At Hotel Kanyat, we used it. I did the same thing that I always do, which is like turn the little knob so it can almost turn on, but it's not going to turn on. After I do that, I shake it and like I'll set it down really hard and make sure that it's not just going to turn on. And it didn't mm-hmm. when I did any of those things. We set it down. Start asking questions. It was on the edge of the bed. It did turn on occasionally to some questions. And it did turn on in a way that we would take it as an intellectual response. Well, an intelligent response. Mm-hmm. But... And in the moment, we were, like, super excited about it. Because it was the first thing that we had the whole night and we were like starting to get really discouraged yeah and so like if we if we put the clip on our instagram our our friend tiffany went with us and she was asking questions during this point and it's going off and it's going on and but in hindsight we (laughs) we don't know how accurate that is right because we would ask like a question like were you supposed to get married in april and it would turn on yeah because we had like put if it's a yes turn on the flashlight if it's a no leave it off right but then if we didn't get anything for a while and we're like are you still there nothing would happen or we'd ask another question that we know to be true like she was supposed to get married on april 29th 
and it wouldn't go off. The flashlight wouldn't turn on. Mm-hmm. We might put it on Instagram. We aren't really sure yet. Yeah. We're kind of like, mulling it over. I think it's one of those things that, like, maybe we put it on. Yeah. Maybe we don't. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be a surprise to us all. <laughs> well, and the fact that there were such high EMFs in the whole place, the, how, like, because you've talked about how the flashlight works before. There's a really thin piece of metal mm-hmm. in it. And to turn it on and off, it's when, like, that metal connects to another piece of metal, and that's when it turns on. But we have no idea if this crazy high EMFs would make that piece of metal contract. Like if it was barely turned off. Right. We're not, and we're not sure if that's how the science of it works. Oh, yeah. But in the interest the, of the, debunkability, and the fact that we didn't get anything else, no e, no EVPs, because we had the voice recorder going the whole time. Nothing, nothing on the speaker box. Absolutely nothing. That's the only thing that happened the entire trip mm-hmm. was that ten minute episode of. It was very exciting when it happened. Yeah, and yeah, and in the moment we were like thrilled because nothing else had happened the whole trip and it was such a cool moment, but then on hindsight, it's well, it what could have that been could that have been real? Right. I don't know. It, the whole place was weird anyway. It didn't I think it's <sighs> I think we're both very in tune with the vibes that Mm -hmm. places give off. And Tiffany is too. And we, I'll speak for myself, I did not feel any paranormal presence the entire time that we were there. And you're the one that's usually most sensitive to it with with your like weird eye thing. Because it doesn't creep me out. Like paranormal stuff doesn't creep me out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, ugh. Like that's... Okay. But you're not like me when the first time we turned on the stupid connect, I'm like cowering like in the corner. Yourself. Yeah, because I was just it that thing creeps me out. I, I like love it. Yeah. And so I'll use it. It's I'll stand there and, and I'll like gain some confidence, but the first time we used it, I was oof. Right. I was I was scared. There was no like heavy feeling Mm -mm. there was like i never heard anything i never saw anything out of the corner of my eye it just the vibe was just that it was an old hotel and i i can you can speak for me as well with that because i didn't feel anything and like i said you're normally more in tune than i am with that kind of stuff but i really didn't feel anything other than "Mm, don't really want to be here alone generally sketch it was a genuinely sketch yeah it was it was a sketchy feeling not a paranormal feeling. Yeah. And we went, like I said, we we did it in our, we did the investigation in the room, which is supposed to be the most haunted. We even went into the stairwell that the little boy is said to have fallen down. Nothing. We didn't go to the basement, obviously, because we couldn't go in the basement. But I think the real nail in the coffin for me is that none of these stories or legends, the bride, the boy, the butcher, none of them are authenticated. And we found this out later. We, yeah, Not we did find one this out of later. Them is authentic. <laughs> N- there's been no deaths on the property. There hasn't even been any injuries on the property. And you might think, okay, well, it was a long time ago. That's why they're not documented. But 1943 was not that long ago. No, and things were... Like, World War II was happening. Like, there was... Things were being documented Things were being documented. Especially if somebody, like, died in lightning. Or, like, died in a lightning fire. Right. Like, because, well, you have... Recorded. I don't know. Do you call it a... Is it a manifest? That's what they call it, like a plain manifest. But like a hotel roster or manifest of all the people that are staying in there. And had people been missing, which is what they would have been looking for Mm -hmm. with that fire. Absolutely. Had people been missing, that would have been documented. And they would have looked for their bodies. And 1943 was not that long ago. No. And the hotel, Hotel Kanye, was on A&E on a show called Paranormal State. And it's the Penn State Paranormal Research Unit. They it was it was the early two thousands, but they went and did a whole investigation of it, a whole lockdown. And to be honest, it's kind of a, a cheesy paranormal show, like you would expect an early two thousands paranormal show to be. But they were convinced that they had something. Actually, one part of the show you can see one of the doors open, and you can they show you from multiple camera angles, and no one touches the door. Like you see this guy walk up to it, go to walk through the door, and like open it with his hands. He never touched it. The door opens before him. And there's another, like, doors opening was, like, the theme of that show. But that research group also went and tracked down some historians and some journalists and 
they couldn't authenticate any of the deaths that had happened there. And you'd think in 1943, if a woman goes missing and the groom made it out, but his bride didn't, he'd report that. You can later be like, oh, she was in this hotel on this day. The lightning hit. No bodies were found. You know what I mean? Like, it's... 1943 was not that long ago. They were definitely... They were documenting deaths in 1943. If it had been, like, late 1800s, I'd be like, well, maybe maybe it slipped through the cracks. Yeah. But I mean... 1943 like my grandma was 20 yeah like it it, when you think about it Mm -hmm. it wasn't that long ago yeah and another big part of that show which i appreciated they got a parapsychologist in to to talk about this kind of stuff because the guy that that leads the group was kind of baffled he was like well none of this stuff has been authenticated but yet we feel like we've made contact with Elizabeth. And they, that show even brought in Chip Coffee. If you don't know who Chip Coffee is, you're missing out. He's a great guy. <laughs> Biggest fan of Chip Coffee. I love Chip Coffee. But even Chip Coffee picked up on the angry butcher in the basement or the bride, Elizabeth. He's a woman in white. And so the, um, I don't remember his name, but the leader of the Penn State Paranormal Group contacted a parapsychologist and was asking him about how could this be kind of thing. If none of these stories are true and these people never really existed, what's going on? And they talk about how if a legend has been built up over time and it's deeply rooted in the community and it's something that so many people believe because even, I don't think it was the owner, but somebody who had a lot of authority in the hotel when the show was filmed, they had closed the restaurant down and they closed the kitchens down because they were so terrified and they couldn't keep people hired because everyone would quit because of this butcher in the basement. Like that was like a thing. They didn't, they hadn't had the restaurant running in a while. And so they were talking about like how these legends are so deeply rooted and people believe in them so hard that you can actually manifest that activity, if you will. And if you don't know about parapsychology, you should look into it. It's really cool. Maybe we'll even do an episode about it because it's so in-depth. It's such a cool field and so intriguing. But then he goes on to say that if Chip was with people who knew of these legends and then believed in them, because when they brought Chip in, that was before they talked to the historians. They didn't know they weren't authenticated. He was talking about how, like, if Chip is a medium, if he's with other people that also believe this stuff, he could just be picking up on their beliefs. Because if they're thinking about it, which I'm sure they are while they're in there. Right. They took him to the staircase. They took him to the basement where this guy was supposedly this butcher killed somebody. Like, so they had to have been thinking it or, you know, at least projecting projecting it in some way. Yeah. And he would, of course, pick up on that because he's there to pick up on... Like, Stuff the like energy that. in the room. Yeah. And so I, I just think parapsychology is such a cool topic. So intriguing. And I think that I think that's what Hotel Kanya is. Yeah. Is just so many people have believed in these legends for so long. They're just manifesting those things that they that they know that they're going to see. So they're just hoping and hoping that they're going to see things right. and it's, hear things. It's like if we... Because we'll, we'll play EVPs for you guys and you can listen back. But if we didn't tell you what we thought it said would you hear the same thing right like the power of the mind the power of Mm -hmm. of speech and being influenced right and i think that that lends a huge hand to hotel kanya yeah i don't want to say it's not haunted right because it is a very old hotel and i what appears to me to be a very old town Mm -hmm. so i'm sure that there is energy inside of hotel kanya that is there i don't know that it's necessarily paranormal Mm -hmm. because nothing We didn't get anything. And we realize that we're not using the most high-tech equipment. Mm -hmm. We don't have thousands of dollars worth of special cameras and infrared lights and full-spectrum night vision, whatever. But the baseline products that we have and that we use and that we love have always worked. Mm -hmm. And we've always had successful investigations with them as long as we're doing them somewhere haunted. Like, if we were to... I think we've used the spear box in a few different locations and gotten absolutely nothing. But also gotten a ton of stuff. In, in other places. In places that have known to been known to be haunted. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm more leaning to believe that our equipment does work because mm-hmm. it's worked for us in the past. And I think since I well, I knew when we I knew before we got there that none of these things were authenticated because I do the history research and that's something that I had found out. And I think that that almost might have ruined it for me knowing that they weren't real. Yeah. And I almost wonder that if we didn't do the research beforehand, mm-hmm. that we would have gotten a different experience because we would have been feeding, you know, the energy that that surrounds it. We would have been feeding that idea. Right. It's just something like interesting to think about. And especially interesting to think about 
for the next place we go Mm -hmm. and the next haunted location that we do. Maybe I wait to do the research fully, you know? Right. Maybe. Because then we can't manifest anything that's not there. Yeah. And and we we... can't be disappointed if we find out that it's not true. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not biased walking Mm -hmm. in. Because I think that's, that might have what happened to me a little bit is I knew that these things weren't real and I walked in there and I'm like, this is a gross hotel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's very kind of run down. And it doesn't it doesn't feel paranormal, and I know the paranormal legends aren't true, and I think I just kind of I didn't give it as much of a chance as I could have, right? But despite that, despite that, nothing happened. We still got nothing. <laughs> the, Absolutely nothing. To be fair, Hotel Kanya is a wedding venue, which I found to be a little bit surprising, but Please also don't get married there. not surprising in the fact that. The waterfront is beautiful. The ballroom was beautiful. The ballroom had to have been new within the last 10 years. Had to have been. Or even just upkept. Yeah. Because if it's... Because, like, the paint was pretty. Like, because we got to look in the windows. We couldn't go in there. But everything was clean. It was all dusted. There was no paint chips. Mm-hmm. And, like, we, we'll we post pictures of our room on Instagram. But even on in the hallways of this hotel, the arrows that hotels have that like, go, like... This way to lobby or this way to elevator or to stairs. Half of those signs were written on in Sharpie. Yeah, written just on the wall. On the wall. Mm-hmm. And half of our room didn't have light bulbs. Like I went, Tiffany went to go turn a lamp on, and there was no light bulb. In it. Mm-hmm. Like, just it was I don't kind know. of it was kind of a mess. It was I an adventure had, for sure. It's always an adventure. <laughs> Definitely unforgettable. We're very sorry that this episode was not paranormal and full of spirit box sessions and EVPs and really cool evidence. Yeah. But there, honestly, there was nothing to show you. Yeah. Other and than like if us we, asking questions and then getting absolutely nothing. Just if we, static. If we sound blasé about it, it's because we're really disappointed. <laughs> we had really high hopes because, I mean, we went on a long journey to get there. I was so looking forward to this hotel, and I was like, I really hope that it really is haunted. I hope that I, like, I want my mind to be blown, you know? Because mm-hmm. it has that huge reputation of being haunted. And I was just so disappointed to get nothing. Like, I was, I'm was, i shocked still that we didn't get anything. And it's not like we just, like, glanced over the evidence. We've gone through it. Mm-hmm. And we've re-listened to it, and we've tried to hear something. <laughs> right. But and Nothing. No. Well, with all that being said... If you'd like to go visit Hotel Kanya and find out if it's haunted yourself, by all means, please go. Please let us know if you've ever been there, if you've ever stayed there. Sorry to anybody who lives on the lake, as I've dissed it kind of hard today. (laughs) Again, we're sorry that this episode is not full of mind-blowing EVPs, but we've always said that we're still going to bring stuff to you. We're still going to let you know our experience, even if we didn't get anything. I think that it's important that we do share our experiences because we still went and did it. And we still tried. Mm-hmm. You know, we still went. We still tried. It was still an adventure. Yeah. And it's not like you can't go and have paranormal experiences. You might. Oh, yeah. And like the some of the paranormal uh, things on that show, Paranormal State, I, I was fully convinced that they that was real evidence that they caught. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to go back there. Mm-mm. But I'm a little bit intrigued that we didn't get anything. We are going to be posting pictures of Hotel Kanya and pictures of our experience there. Mm -hmm. Kind of some cool things that we saw inside of the hotel, amongst other things, on our social medias. You can find it on Instagram at Sunday Night Spookies, on Twitter at Sunday Spookies, and on Facebook at the Sunday Night Spookies podcast. I also want to quick mention, we do have affiliate links in the description of this podcast. We do get a very small portion of that if you choose to buy anything from our links. It's by no means necessary. We uh, Even if you listen, it, that's a huge, a huge thing for us, and we thank you so much. We are affiliates to Instacart. You can get your groceries delivered right to your door. I use it every week. I love it. I hate going grocery shopping, so it's a great thing for me. Um, if you also want to start your own podcast, we have a link where you can do that through Buzzsprout. Again, it's an affiliate link. Help us out. Help you out to start your podcast. And then we also have our links to our spirit box, our email detector, the flashlight we use, stuff like that in the box. Um, Again, those are affiliate links through Amazon. And then we also just recently started a PayPal. Again, this is not anything that's obligated. I feel kind of weird announcing it. (laughs) Right. But it's, it's basically to 
help us get to where we want to go. We're two broke college students and we want to travel. We want to go to all these haunted places to make content for you guys and for, you know, whoever else decides to listen in the future. Like I said, we want to get really good content. We want to visit like the Lizzie Borden house or the Winchester house or like just big places like that. That's a little bit harder to get to. So if you want to throw some change our way, you feeling really nice. We have a pay bill for that. We're eternally <laughs> grateful. Oh, yeah. So, so grateful. And if you do, if you are okay with it, we will make sure to shout you out on our social media as this huge, a huge thank you for being an awesome person. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sunday Night Spookies. Join us next week for an episode about the lost colony of Roanoke. New episodes are released every Sunday evening. Thanks so much for listening. And as always, stay, stay spooky. spooky.